decided to cut a hole in a door, the main entrance door, and, and they shook hands and made up, so it's called the Door of Reconciliation. But it's also where we get the Irish-wide term, chancing your arm. Have you ever heard chancing your arm? No. no. It means to take a risk. And somebody who's a bit of a risk taker is a chancer, pushing luck. difficult to have been a monk back then because you know you had to get your bird feather cut it to the right angle um, stretch the calf side have it all ready and then you're just about to dip your <coughs> quill into the ink and a viking burst through the door <laughs> and you blot the vellum Imagine the disappointment. So the Viking comes in with a big belt. There's an axe at one side <coughs> and a horn at the other. The horn was a drinking implement. You would usually uh, try the water, and if the water wasn't sweet, you go for ale, mead, you know, the honey-based drink, beer. And even if what well, the water was sweet, you could go for those as well. So, evidence whatsoever that the Vikings had worn helmets. <laughs> it was revitalized in, the, uh, in Sweden, in particular, in the 1900s with the Nordic revival. Sorry, the late 1800s with the Nordic revival. The monks. It's all about the So the Vikings weren't specifically coming for manuscripts. They were raiding for gold. We had a lot of chalice made from gold or silver, and they were studded with beautiful jewels. If you would like to see any of those today, it's on Kildare Street in our National Museum. There are some really beautiful works of art. And why did the monks have them? Well, the monks were clever, you know. When the Irish were going into war, they said, just give us all your gold and we'll look after it. And the lords would say, or the kings would say, oh, well, what if we don't go back, come back? They'd say, well, you go straight to heaven. So whether you believed it or not, it seemed like a good exit strategy. Now we're going to come to a school that was established. So we had the earls of Kildare, the kings, and then later the Lord of Kildare.